Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Shadwick. Commissioner Sparks. Here. Commissioner Vidrickson. Here. Commissioner Weiss. Here. Commissioner White. Here. Uh, I'd like for you, everyone to stand and join me in the flag salute, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We now move to the public forum portion of our meeting where the citizens may speak on county government, usually limited to three minutes and pertaining to items not on today's agenda. Next week, there will be no meeting. Please I state your name and your address, please. Uh, same as it was last time. Norman Mantle, Salina, Kansas. Uh, there's no meeting, I understand, next week because you're going to a county commissioner's meeting. I brought this suggestion up before <coughs> suggest it to your association why don't you record that meeting and just that way only one person from the county would be going they could get the information then come back with that video then you could play it for all of the commissioners in the meeting you could save money we would be spending no money on hotels meals mileage but I guess we don't want to save any money do we also, you need to record these meetings for future references. Statements have been made in either out here or in there to study session. And some, the statement was made, well, I never heard it. Another person says, I heard it. You could go back and review it for clarity, saying this was stated this way. That's why we're having so much confusion. Thank you. Seeing no one else, uh, I'll bring it back to the uh, commission for uh, regular business. And I will state before uh, we, uh, we approve the agenda that there has been an item added to uh, item number nine, which will be an emergency uh, management update on, on the, the flooding possibilities and, and what's really going on with the weather. So that having been said, uh, clerk will read the item number one. Approve agenda for public forum as presented. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the agenda for the public forum as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve today's agenda as stated. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item number two. Approval of county commission mini minutes for September 25th, 2018. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the county commission minutes of September 25th, 2018 as presented. Second. Then moved and seconded that we approve uh, the county commission meeting minutes for September 25th, 2018. All those <coughs> in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number three. Approval of county commission minutes for October 2nd, 2018. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the county commission minutes of October 2nd, 2018 as presented. Second. Then moved and seconded that we approve, uh, that we accept the county commission minutes of uh, October 2nd, 2018. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number four. Proclamation declaring October 2018 as Down Syndrome Awareness Month. Uh, presented by Jamie Allen County Clerk. Uh, County of Saline Commissioner's Proclamation. Whereas approximately one in every 800 children are born with Down Syndrome, representing approximately 5,000 births per year in the United States. And while whereas, whilst research and early intervention have resulted in dramatic improvements in the lifespan and potential of those who are affected, more investigation is needed in the causes and treatment of Down syndrome. And whereas people with Down syndrome possess a wide range of abilities and are active participants in educational, occupational, social, and recreational circles of the community, and whereas developed by the National Down Syndrome Society in 1995, the Body wa Buddy Walk is an annual event in cities across Kansas and the, and the national and the nation celebrating the accomplishments of children and adults with Down Syndrome. 
And whereas the North Central Kansas Down Syndrome Society has supported families who have children with Down Syndrome and desires to increase the support network and support groups of those with Down Syndrome across our state. And whereas the goal of the Buddy Walk is to promote increased understanding and acceptance of people with Down Syndrome while raising funds for scientific research into the causes and treatments and family support. Now, therefore, we as commissioners of Saline County do hereby proclaim October 2018 as Down Syndrome Awareness Month throughout the county and encourage all of Saline County to work together to promote awareness of Down Syndrome and to celebrate the accomplishments of individuals and their families. Uh, if I recall, last week we announced that there would be a Down Syndrome walk, uh, I believe that's in uh, Clyde, Kansas, this Sunday. Uh, anybody have any of the, follow the information on that? Yeah. Go ahead and state that for us, please. Yeah, the uh, one mile 15th annual Buddy Walk hosted by the Nash North Central Kansas Down Syndrome Society will take place Sunday, October 7th. It's at Clyde City Park in Clyde, Kansas. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for the, the presentation. Uh, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move we declare October 2018 as Down Syndrome Awareness Month. Second. I've been moved and seconded that we uh, declare October 18th, October 2018 as Down Syndrome Awareness Month. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. We'll move on to item number five. RFA 192-18, Community <coughs> Development Block Grant Application. Rosie Walters, Senior Services Director. Good morning, Rosie. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Senior Services is requesting commission approval to submit the application for 2019 Community development and block grant funds in the amount of 120,377 with a county match of 60,189. Um, this is an application that was developed with David Neal, the Planning and Zoning Director, Dwayne Grace, and Johnny Adam with A Plus Architectural and Construction Services. The request includes um, total reconstruction of the two dining room bathrooms on that main floor um, changing all the fixtures on all the bathrooms to a higher model, and then um, the plumbing that goes in those restrooms, and then um, restoring the roof or replacing the roof. Um, the advisory council did meet on September 28th and they did review and approve. So today I'm asking for commission approval. Okay, and the budget impact, let's see, that comes from the contingency funds that are set aside for the senior services, is that correct? The, the uh, CIP, capital improvement set money set aside, yes. Okay, are there uh, further questions of, of uh, the commission to the staff? The, the way that you just stated that though was is that uh, the $120,000 with our matching deal is $60,000. The grant is actually for sixty thousand dollars, one hundred eighty-nine. Is that correct? No, the the actual grant is one hundred and twenty thousand three hundred seventy-seven, but it re does require a match. So I'm asking the county today for half of that, which is sixty thousand one eighty-nine, and the the rest of the grant, the CDBG funds would fund the difference. So this is the application to fund that difference. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Is there any public comment? Seeing that, I'll bring it back to the uh, staff. I think it's uh, obviously very important to, to update our facility over there. Uh, we've gotten into this business of senior services, and uh, we need to make our facilities uh, uh, equitable and, and, and feasible to use for these senior citizens. And uh, so I think it's uh, money well spent in the long run. So Thank you. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move we submit the Kansas Small Cities Program Community Development Block Grant application as requested. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 192-18 for a Community Development block, block Grant application. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries, 4-0. Thank you. Item number six. 
RFA 190-18 Aetna Contract, Jason Tiller, Health Department Director. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Commissioners. Jeff, uh, in front of you, the health insurance company Aetna will be replacing Amerigroup as one of the three providers under the Can Care system for Medicaid, and that goes into effect January 1st. Um, as such, the health department must enter into a contract with Aetna to providing, uh, continue providing care for those that are serviced under Can Care. And this is required of all providers, hospitals, long-term care, et cetera, that uh, participate in Can Care across the state. Alternatives, accept the contract as proposed, um, send back for questions or refuse the contract. Uh, the county council has reviewed this contract and has stated there's no issues that he sees with it. Uh, staff recommend signing the contract with Aetna to avoid any interruptions in care or revenue uh, come January 21st and no uh, anticipated budgetary impact at this time. So uh, in other words, the $419,463 would come That's totally from, a, from the grant? We're looking at the Aetna contract, sir. That's the WIC application that's the next or the WIC grant that's the next uh, item on there I'm sorry <coughs> did get out of order okay so it's just some house cleaning then and it is the, since the, the, state, the state place. decided to go from using Amerigroup as one of the three providers to Aetna this is just one of the formalities so that we can continue providing cares to have to contract with Aetna now very good. Any further questions or comments? Is there any public comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the Commission for Possible Action. Mr. Chairman, I move we sign the contract with Aetna as requested by staff. Second the motion. Uh, it's been moved and second that we approve RFA 190-18 for an Aetna contract. Is there any further questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Now we'll move to item number seven that I was out of control on. <laughs> RFA number 191-18, WIC grant application, Jason Tiller, Health Department Director. All right, Jason, you're on again. Yes, sir. Um, one thing I just noticed on here, this says grant application. We've already, uh, this is our standard annual WIC contract that we get each year for the WIC grant. So this is actually the contract, not the application. That's where I was getting confused, I think. So we're, uh, as far as the request for action, this is not a grant application. No, this is the grant contract. Do we need to clarify this with and clean up our paperwork then, Rita? I think it's only on your agenda, so I think you're okay. Well, it's, it's right here on my request for action. That's how I'm reading it. Uh, it's a. It's, it's it says contract. Annual contract. It's with annual infants contract. And children I program. Okay. Questions for Mr. Tiller? If not hearing none, I'll bring it back to the. Uh, or excuse me. Is there any public comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission for action. Mr. Chairman, I move we approved and signed the WIC grant as requested by staff. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 191-18 for a WIC grant of contract. contract instead of a grant application contract. That's where I'm continue to lose track. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. We'll move on to um, Item number eight. Resolution 18-2258, disaster declaration. Hannah Stanball, Emergency Management Director. Good morning, Hannah.
Hold up a second, Hannah. Then you need to adjust your microphone down a little bit, maybe. Is, is, is that better? Is that better? Okay, yeah. There fine. we go. Would you like me to start over? <laughs> uh, why don't you please? <laughs> okay. Um, commissioners, uh, this is for uh, resolution 18 2258 and proclamation for a proclamation of a state of local disaster for Saline County, Kansas. Whereas on the ninth day of October 2018, the Board of County Commissioners of Saline County, Kansas, finds that certain conditions have caused or imminently threatened to cause widespread or severe damage, injury or loss of life or property in disaster proportion and pursuant to KSA 48-932 and proclaim that a state of local disaster emergency exists in Saline County, Kansas. And whereas such flooding conditions have created obstructions or will create obstructions which endanger health, safety, and welfare of persons and property within the border of Saline County, Kansas. Now therefore, be it resolved that by the Board of County Commissioners of Saline County, Kansas does hereby proclaim that a state of local disaster emergency exists. It is further resolved that the area covered by this resolution proclamation includes the entire area of Saline County, Kansas, and all cities or townships contained therein. Be there further resolved that this resolution shall remain in effect for a period of seven days unless terminated earlier or renewed by consent of the governing body, adopted by the Board of County Commissioners this ninth day of October 2018. Um, just to kind of give you a um, update as far as what it is that we are expecting. Um, Obviously, we've seen quite a bit of rain the last few days that has created some issues with uh, the potential for flooding. This is a current snapshot of our river gauges uh, at the Mulberry, and then also I've got some images of the Smoky Hill River, too. Um, this is one site that we are uh, very concerned with at Mulberry. Um, flood stage on this particular river is 24 feet. It is forecasted um, to rise near 27.4 feet by early Wednesday morning um, and then fall below back below flood stages by late Wednesday morning. Um, the impact that we possibly could see at 27.4 feet, uh, the Mulberry Creek can expand to a half a mile to one mile wide um, along Halstead Road and a half mile north of the creek's gauge site can take on up to two feet of water. Additionally, State Street west of I-135 begins to flood and the areas of Thomas Park on North 9th Street and the northern end of Salina is experienced or could experience flooding. Um, we've been in contact with the City of Salina Public Works Department. They are evaluating conditions. There was a press release that was issued yesterday about the potential of road closings at eight o'clock this morning. Those have been held back um, until we can evaluate things. We didn't get near as much uh, moisture overnight is what we were expecting. Um, so you can see on this particular gauge that th it looks like the river is going down, um, that it will be creeping its way back up based off of all of the water that we have to the west of us that is coming uh, down. So uh, we are just constantly evaluating those particular areas for road closures that are that are would be imminently have to happen and mainly for the safety and sake of, of people to keep them out of areas that are hazardous. The second site that has um, concerns is out by um, the area of New Cambria. This is a Smoky Hill River that is, um, flood stage on this particular river is 27 feet and we are looking at for it to continue to rise to near 31.9 feet by early Wednesday afternoon and then the river to fall below flood stage by Thursday afternoon. The impact at 31 feet out by New Cambria is all roads leading into New Cambria become flooded. Old Highway 40 between Marymount Road and Whitmore Road is closed due to flood waters. Those are the impacts that we have the potential of seeing. Um, you can see from this site that uh, the river is on its way up. Um, we still have a little bit of room left in, that in the river banks to hold some more, but again, we've got potential for water um, not only today, but into the evening hours. So Old 40 is not closed, right? It is not. We okay. do not have any roads that are closed right now. Okay. Um, we are just looking at the potential of, of that. And then the last site is the Smoky Hill River near Mentor. <coughs> um, again, this site is uh, towards the southern end of the county. Um, we are experience or have the potential to experience minor flooding with a crest of about 21.7 uh, feet. Um, so the impacts in this particular area aren't as great. However, there is still the potential for some minor flooding. 
So the proclamation that has been put in front of you today is really very precautionary. Um, what it does is certainly helps with declaring the fact that, that we do have the serious potential of having some major issues. Uh, the hydraulics that I talked to with the National Weather Service last night basically compared some of these river levels to 2007, if anybody was around in 2007, to know what those impacts look like, especially in the northern end of Salina and then Alpine New Cambria. So we certainly have the potential. Uh, we really hope that it doesn't happen, uh, but the proclamation that has been brought in, forward in front of you today certainly will help with um, providing us with um, the activation of our emergency operations plan. So a proclamation is, is clearly informing us that uh, that the potential is, is available. It's, it's not er, going to imminent that it's going to happen probably. But so there's nothing for us to do at this time other than uh, accept the proclamation. Is that correct? That is correct. So by signing the proclamation that activates our emergency operations plan that we have designated for the county, um, it also certainly puts into s to motion some other things as well, the potential for us to activate the mutual aid agreements that we have. Um, it certainly gives us direct access to state um, and other resources if by chance we would happen to need those. So it certainly is just a, something that certainly can help put things into motion a lot faster. Um, that we have just that we have declared that there is a potential for imminent flooding. Very good. Uh, is there questions of Hannah? Comments from the staff or from the commission? And this will last for a week period, correct? Yes. So disaster declarations are automatically in effect for seven days. Our hope is that we will see the rivers fall rapidly after they rise, and um, but obviously the effects of um, water have a lasting potential. So this will get us through at least seven days. And reevaluate it this time next week. Yes, that is correct, sir. Thank you, ma'am. All right, no further questions. I'll bring it back to the, uh, to the commission for action. Mr. Chairman, I move we proclaim October 9th, 2018 as a state and local disaster for Sling County to remain in effect for seven days. Second the motion. That's been moved and seconded that we proclaim October 9th, 2018 as a state and local disaster for Sling County to remain in effect for seven days. This is resolution 18-2258 uh, disaster declaration. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We'll move to item number nine. Emer emergency management update. Hannah Stanball, Emergency Management Director. Good morning, Good morning again, Hannah. Okay, so this is a, our uh, quarterly update for the months of July, August, and September of 2018. So we kind of experienced a little wave of, of interesting weather um, with July being extreme heat, August being cooler temperatures, and the beginning of September full of lots of moisture. Um, this was obviously <laughs> for this week, but uh, even we had about uh, five inches of precipitation that we saw in the month of September, which was really good. And on average, we've seen about 20.79 inches of precipitation, but that still does leave us behind um, uh, by on September 30th by about six and a half inches. So uh, drought conditions have obviously greatly improved from, from the last quarterly report, but there's still a portion in the southeast part of our county that is in the abnormally dry category. I have a feeling that's going to be updated here pretty <laughs> rapidly. <laughs> um, so looking in the months to come, there's obviously a large possibility <coughs> of continuing to seeing um, above normal temperatures and slightly uh, slight chance of above normal precipitation kind of moving into our winter months. And the prediction is what they call an El Nino winter. Um, so it really kind of depends on where the jet stream all sets up, but it certainly has the potential to bring more moisture to the southern half of the United States. So we'll see what Mother Nature brings us in the form of precipitation coming uh, for the winter. Um, for emergency management updates, we've had a uh, pretty busy, we've been pretty busy over the last uh, few months. Uh, July 4th is always a ner nerve wracking time for us, uh, just with the potential of um, fires due to fireworks, but luckily we only had three calls uh, during that time period where fireworks are allowed to be shot off that were fireworks related and quickly uh, taken care of. So that was obviously really nice. Um, also in the month of July, we took possession of our new um, SUV that's already been proven to be an excellent uh, purchase and very handy for carrying around all the stuff that we need to carry around, especially actually in the last few days. Um, 
Lastly, our staff had been attending a series of courses for a completion of a course called Foundations of Emergency Management that has been um, completed. Um, there were four different sessions that were held throughout the year and certificates for completion have been um, obtained. We uh, worked with all of our different um, responding partners to build what we call an incident action plan for the Smoky Hill River Festival. Um, as well as for the Tri Rivers Fair. And what it is is really a document that we put together that has all types of emergency contact information, scheduling information of all of the fire department, police department. Um, it definitely proved to be a very successful document that could be referenced in the heat of you know something happening. Uh, so we're gonna continue to, to exercise building those pre-plans uh, for major large events like that. Um, the other big thing that uh, we uh, had this last quarter was September 11th through the 14th, we attended our annual Kansas Emergency Management Conference in Topeka. Um, we were fortunate to receive some training from the Naval Postgraduate School on crisis communications and trends of disasters as well as futures of disasters. So both Bernie and I came back home with our brains full of ideas and knowledge and just a wonderful experience. Um, the conference is always a, is always just a great time. Um, so also with that, um, myself was awarded the 2018 Kansas Emergency Management Outstanding Service Award. Um, that will actually be brought to the commission on the 23rd of October for a formal presentation. So it was a great um, award to receive for all of the hard work that I've done across the state, but not only is it an award for myself, it's for my office and for this county, so. Well, congratulations Thank on that. You. Thank you very much. Um, we also were very proud to uh, work with uh, three Kansas Westland students who are emergency management majors. They came and they interned at our conference. Obviously, this is the second year that we've done that, and it's actually proven to be an absolutely wonderful experience for them to get to know um, all the emergency management professionals across the state. So we will love to continue working with them for that. Um, the other uh, exciting thing that we were able to do is participation with the Boy Scouts annual campery. Both Bernie and I went out to Crisis City on a Saturday and helped with uh, <laughs> over 100 scouts that were able to obtain their merit badge for uh, emergency preparedness, and that's always a fun event. Uh, moving on to our fire districts, um, I think with the moisture, it really kept a lot of their call loads down. Um, probably the largest fires that we had were in result of li lightning strikes with hay bales, um, but nothing really of, of major concern. Um, probably the, the largest uh, that we had was on July 17th. We had a garage slash structure fire in the town of Smolin, which uh, fire district number six and fire district number two responded to. So total calls for fire, for the fire districts in July, we only have nine calls. In August, there were 17, and September, a total of 12, which those numbers are actually down from previous years, so we like to see that, obviously. Um, so subject to any questions that you have, that is my quarterly report for emergency management and rural fire. I have no questions. I just want to say, uh, again, congratulations on the award that your department has is being presented here shortly. and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, your office seems to be in good shape, and we appreciate your efforts. So, thank you. Other comments or questions from the commission? All right, we accept your uh, report as presented. That is the end of our uh, meeting today. Are th is there any uh, other business to be addressed at this time? I will point out that uh, Mr. Mantle was correct. Uh, we will be off spending county money at, at the KAC. Uh, annual state meeting next week in Topeka, so therefore there will be no meeting as a quor as because uh, a quorum will not be able to be present. So our next meeting would then be uh, October the 23rd, I believe that's correct. Um, well, this two weeks from today will be the next county meeting, we'll put it that way, so. And Mr. Chair, I'd like to add to that situation there is just to, to let Norman know is that it's just not only for our county commissioners, it's for all departments of the, the Kansas counties. And so the nice thing about it getting together is to find out what other counties are doing in certain situations. Uh, I know that a lot of people feel that, that it might be a waste of money, but 
the knowledge base that you get from attending all the different uh, uh, conferences that are there that are provided is uh, invaluable. So it, it's a whole scope of different things and people networking together that you come back with a whole brand new idea and uh, there's a lot of vendors there that you get to see new products, find out what is happening and, and what's available. So it it is a, <coughs> we spend a little money to do this and, and I think it's a it's an invaluable uh, few days to go learn. So I just want to throw that out. Are there any other announcements? Hearing none, I will take a motion for adjournment. <coughs> so moved. Second. Been moved and seconded that with today's meeting will be adjourned. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We're adjourned.